It's, it's interesting to look at these things from, obviously, from multiple perspectives, which is another thing ideologues don't do, right? Mm. Because for them, everything is one cause. Yes. There's one, that's how you can tell when you're dealing with someone who's ideologically possessed, is they make everything attributable to a single cause, like power. Yes. So, but, right. so one of the things that's happened with the nuclear family that's quite interesting, too, is that parents are older, and they, and they have fewer children. Mm. So you could imagine that that hothouse environment, in some sense, has been exaggerated for a bunch of reasons. One is, well, your child is a lot more valuable to you if you're older and you only have one or two, right? Because you're not going to get another chance. That's, first of all, you might have had some trouble having the child to begin with. Um, and you're not going to get another chance. So you've got all your eggs are in one basket, so to speak. And then, of course, children don't have the number of siblings they used to have. And one of the things that's really useful about having siblings is that they keep you in your place, right? They, they're primary socialization agents. And I mean, that can be brutal. I mean, that's reflected, say, in the story of Cain and Abel, you know, that that internal household dynamic with siblings can, be, can really become murderous. And that has to be kept under control. But I think the, the, the hothouse flower person who's, who's incapable of tolerating any jibes or any, or any testing, any dominance hierarchy testing of the sort that you said that men do. Part of that's the consequence of being raised by older parents who have excess resources, who have no siblings, because the, the child is then, of course, special. And that specialness, well, there, there seems to be an inverse relationship between that specialness that's protected and the person's robustness and resilience and so and then that's cotton to or not cotton to that's that's uh, uh, pandered to by the universities which insist upon setting up a situation where no one is ever offended by anything any of the time and that's something I also can't understand at all because but let me just say that's a yeah. huge point you just made okay because it's the upper middle class of the, the professional class okay who postpones having the children okay because they, they go to law school they go to medical school right and, and they and they have the children after they're, they're, they're settled okay in a, in, in a job okay so they're the, they're the ones okay who, who have injected this 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 hypersensitive bourgeois idea you know code in, into the universities now my, my parents were 20 when they married and 21 when they had me. Okay, yeah, right. my, my father was, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, went, went to college on the GI Bill, getting out of out of World War II. So I, when I was born, my father was still in college and was sweeping fl you know, to floors and so on. I am the product of young parents, and nature wants actually <laughs> young parents, right? Because because pregnancy is is, is quicker, it's safer, right. okay, and so on. And my parents had the energy, okay, to um, you know this youthful energy that can do spirit that came out of World War II. And and so on. I'm a product of that. Then, then uh, my only other sibling uh, was born 14 years later. Okay, my father at this point was a college professor. Okay, All right. so she had completely different parents than than I did. So yeah. she, she has very excellent manners and so on. She's completely different. Okay, All right. And I I have all this like well, the energy. I mean, my, my parents were just out of their teens. Okay, so now today we have this situation. No, and it, it's considered heresy to raise this issue. Okay, that you have have young women are told. Okay, there's one future for you. You are future leader. Okay, you. Yeah. Must, you must move forward, okay? Four years of college, and then, and then perhaps some the professional class. All right. So, it, it, it maybe the women, young women's bodies are signaling, okay, that they want to be mothers. Maybe, maybe there are, are signals coming from the body, okay, of maybe now wanting this, this 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 system of education that was devised for men, okay, that's being funneled along, channeled along in this mechanism. All right. So young women, you know, feel unhappy. They don't know why. They feel they. they they have no sense of identity. They, if they if they if they want to marry and drop out of college right, and have have a baby, they will be treated as traitors to their class. Yeah. What you are a future leader? What have a baby? Only working class women would do that. Okay. Yeah. Now what I find working class women, okay, in general, okay. Far more rounded as personalities. Okay, they express themselves forcefully. They have body language that takes up space. Okay, a man says something to them on the street, they're right back in their face, and so on. It is the bourgeois girls, okay, who are taught that they're they're special. Okay, who have to postpone actual life. Okay, for for all these years. You see, these these are the girls who are who, are, who misjudge the fraternity party setting. These are the girls who like run for parental protection and handholding on, on on the on the committee investigating what. Went wrong on their date, and so on and so forth. So, so yes, I, I think that what you that you have located that's very interesting. The idea that the, that these these young girls, okay, who are so sensitive, okay, in college, so unable to handle their 
sex life are the product of older parents because they went through the professional career track.